The Battalion of Special Police Operations, better known as BOP, is a specialized unit of the military police of the state of Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Founded in 1978, BOP is responsible for high-risk operations, such as combating drug trafficking, rescuing hostages, intervening in prisons, among other situations that require quick and precise action. The training of the police officers who make up the BOLP is considered one of the most rigorous in the world, involving techniques for combat, shooting, explosives, rescue, among other essential skills for the success of operations. The unit gained worldwide notoriety after the release of the film, Tropa de Elite, which depicts BOLP's work in combating crime in Rio de Janeiro. The idea of a group of police officers specialized in rescues and risk situations arose after a tragic event in 1974 at the Instituto Penal Evaristo de Marais, in which the director of the prison, held hostage by the criminals, was killed along with some prisoners after the intervention from the police. In 1978, the nucleus of the Special Operations Company was created, made up of volunteer police officers with proven moral integrity and specialization in the armed forces. This special operation operated in a camp in the west zone of Rio de Janeiro and was operationally subordinate to the chief of staff of the military police of Rio de Janeiro. In 1980, he adopted as a symbol the skull pierced by a dagger and two crossed revolvers. In 1982, the nucleus of the special operations company began operating in the facilities of the Shock Police Battalion and received the designation of Special Operations Company. In 1984, it was renamed Nucleus of the Independent Company of Special Operations and in 1988 the Independent Company of Special Operations was created, with its own missions throughout the state of Rio de Janeiro. In 1991, the Special Police Operations Battalion, BOLP, was created, replacing the independent company of special operations and adopting the symbol of a knife embedded in a skull over crossed pistols, which symbolizes victory over death, and pistols are the symbol of the military police. BOPE has generated notoriety due to their role in the violent drug war in the favelas of Rio de Janeiro. They have been referred to as a death squad by multiple newspapers. One aspect that has been pointed out specifically is their logo, which bears a knife and a skull over crossed pistols. The actions of BOPE have been shocking, and yet they are celebrated on the BOPE Facebook page. The favelas of Rio de Janeiro have been a hotbed of violence and crime for decades. Traffickers, police, and the favela itself become hyperreal, taking on constructed, spectacular qualities that do not reflect reality in Rio's hyper-favela. The actions of BOPE in the favelas of Rio de Janeiro have been controversial and have generated both praise and criticism. While BOPE is known for its heavy-handed tactics, it is also recognized for its bravery and dedication to keeping the people of Rio de Janeiro safe. The situation in the favelas of Rio de Janeiro is complex and the actions of BOPE are just one part of a larger issue that requires a comprehensive solution. In June, BOPE officials were told to negotiate with Sandro Barbosa do Nascimento, an apparently drugged kidnapper who was holding hostages in the botanical garden in an event known as the bus kidnapping. The officers spent four hours trying to negotiate with the criminal, and they communicated using gestures, since they didn't have a radio. Coronel Jose Penteado, the unit's commander, was on site and snipers were in place, but the order to fire a fatal shot did not come. After frustrated hours, the kidnapper left the bus with 20-year-old teacher Gaisa Goncalves. Without orders, soldier Marcelo Santos advanced to shoot Sandro with a submachine gun and missed the shot grazing the hostage in the chin. In response, Geisa was shot three times in the back from the kidnapper's revolver. Inside the police car, on the way to prison, the police asphyxiated Sandro. Santos went into depression for years and Penteado disappeared. 
Geis's death served as an example to Bope, which realized the lack of adequate training, equipment, and functional autonomy to decide a crisis situation, and perfected itself especially in rescuing hostages. In December 2000, it gained its own premises, located in the abandoned casino hotel at the top of the Tavares Bastos slum in the Laranjeras neighborhood in the south zone of Rio de Janeiro, which was used as a point of observation of traffic in the region. In the same month, as a result of the kidnapping of the 174 number of the urban bus, the boat created the Tactical Intervention Group, a nucleus for the rescue of hostages. In 2001, Bope adopted armored vehicles named Caveros in literal translation. It would be like a large skull in allusion to the fear that these vehicles cause in gangs to protect PMs and in incursions into favelas. As a result, the battalion was heavily criticized by human rights organizations. Bope was responsible for training Brazilian army troops for the United Nations Mission for Stabilization in Haiti, in the hills of Rio de Janeiro before the soldiers left for the Caribbean. It was 5 hours and 26 minutes, on August 20, 2019, when young William Augusto da Silva, 20 years old, put a handkerchief on his face and announced the hijacking of bus 2520 of Via Cao Galo Branco, which connects Alcantara, in Sao Paulo, Goncalo, to Estacio, in the center of Rio de Janeiro. Armed with a revolver, which later turned out to be a replica, William ordered the driver to cross the vehicle in the middle of one of the lanes of the Rio Niteroi bridge in the middle of rush hour and tied the hands of the 39 hostages with plastic seals. Then he started showing off a hunting knife and hanging bottles full of gasoline from the ceiling. He took a lighter from one of the passengers and threatened to set the bus on fire. He repeated that he was a police officer and suffered from depression. He also said he wouldn't rob and was doing it to go down in history. A boat sniper positioned himself 80 meters from the target on top of a fire department truck and covered his back with a large red cloth to camouflage himself next to the truck. After three and a half hours of pure terror inside the bus, the hijacker was shot six times with an AR-10 rifle fired by the sniper. Two shots hit the chest, two in the legs and two in the arms. William's death was effusively celebrated by Governor Wilson Witzel, who jumped out of a helicopter cheering with clenched fists. Although the execution was seen as timely, as William could injure or kill some of the passengers, the governor's reaction was criticized as a form of inhumanity. Ideally, everyone would leave alive, but we had to make the decision to save the hostages, justified Witzel at the scene. What we saw was a very technical work by the military police. On September 10, 2019, the Legislative Assembly of the State of Rio de Janeiro approved a tribute to the sniper who killed the hijacker of the Rio, Ni Terra Bridge bus, and he was awarded the Tiradentes Medal the highest honor in the state of Rio de Janeiro. For the major sporting events that took place in the city, such as the 2014 FIFA World Cup and the 2016 Olympic Games, investments were planned in training, equipment, and an increase in police personnel. Among the measures taken, the creation of the Tactical Interventions Course, with content on negotiation and equipment, and the exchange to train in Israel and techniques against terrorism stand out. In addition, high-tech equipment was purchased, such as wiretaps, a robot with a camera, a video scope and a Taser X2 with a camera attached to immobilize kidnappers. Bope also participated in several training and simulations with other specialized intervention groups, such as the French National Police BRI, Research and Intervention Brigade, the Navy SEALs and the GIGN, Grupo de Intervenco de Gendarmerie Nationale. All of these measures were aimed at increasing Bope's efficiency and responsiveness in emergency situations, such as kidnappings terrorist attacks and other critical events that could occur during sports games.
This is undoubtedly one of the most feared units on the planet, either for its brutality or for its efficiency. It is not up to us to judge whether it is wrong or right. Only those who live in these areas of risk and together with the operators can say or judge whether or not the use of force is worth it.